also and sent them two by two to the four space of every city and place where he himself had come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways, behold, I send you as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor bag, nor shoes, and greet no man by the way. And to whatever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. In the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the labor is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as they set before you, and heal the sick that are there, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come near unto you. <clears throat> the, uh, the training that Jesus gave to the disciples was very, very practical. <clears throat> he used on-the-job on training. And you can see that by the fact that uh, it was more than just listening to Jesus' word like a student that was learning doctrines. They were intimately involved with Jesus and they were intimately involved with one another. And some people have said, well, why have another Bible school or Bible schools ever? Why do that? Because the Lord gave me, first of all, because the Lord said to raise it up. Second of all, because the Lord gave me specific reasons why he wanted this school. And one was because many schools you go to, you go and you sit for nine months or three years or however long they have their school. You come in the classroom and then in some cases you go home or you go off to your own apartment or whatever. And the, the only real contact that you have to have is sitting in the classroom, and if it's all pretty much teaching, then there's not really a whole lot. I mean, you know, you can, you can fake your way through an awful lot. Um, but Jesus and the 12 disciples, man, they were right there with him, and they were right there with him. And everybody got to see everybody else's junk, and everybody got to see everybody else's life when they shared life, and when they were involved with life. And... <clears throat> These scriptures are interesting because um, a couple of things it says. I mean, he appointed. There, were, there was a group of disciples beyond the twelve that were following Jesus. And he says he appointed other seventy. He said he sent them two by two. And you notice that we do that in Mardi Gras and stuff. And, and we have been derailed because uh, people have uh, not liked the fact that you have to be with somebody or whatever. Uh, first of all, it's just safe. Second of all, it's scriptural. Third of all, uh, and, and, and listen to this carefully, third of all, we do not believe that any one of us is the fullness of Christ in himself. We believe that that is found in the body of Christ. Now, not everybody believes that, or they believe it, but it has no practical value in their life. But we believe that like the scriptures say, you know, when you gather together, you know, if one is an ear and one is an eye, then you've got more functioning of the body. You know, and somebody says, well, you know, y'all don't need me. Well, yeah, you're an ear. We need, we need hearing. Well, you don't need me. Well, I, you know, no, we need every part of the body. Why? First of all, because all the functions are not res resident in one member. Amen. Second of all, and most importantly, Christ is in the fullness in his body. You see the full, and you see more of Jesus by the expression of his body. And so these things are not uh, small to us. Uh, certainly they're not small to me. I mean, I have spent my life, I've dedicated my whole life to truths that I have seen that are more than truth. It is the truth. I've seen the truth himself in the understanding of what a body should be. Go off, come back, go off. No, no, no. The disciples didn't do that. They didn't go off and come back, go off and come back. There was a gathering unto him. There was an understanding that they were, no, it wasn't just an organization 
but it was a means through which Christ was greater expressed. Well, we say, somebody can say, well, how do I see a greater expression of Christ here? Let me tell you something. People see Jesus in ways that you don't even know. They see Jesus in ways you don't even know. You, you, you get used to certain things and you say, well, this is just that. First of all, you should never just get used to things. You should continually be refreshed in the living reality of Christ your life, Christ in his body, uh, the heart of the bride, the reality of the in working of the cross, on and on and on. These things should be a regular part of who we are, not just what we believe. Amen? Amen. I'm glad to get all three of those. I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. And, and if we can give those things up easily, then we've got a problem. Because, you know, you can have a Bible school and teach doctrine. Anybody can get the doctrine of these things. And I have seen so many people just in this Bible school come and go. And once they left, the realities of the cross and the inworking of that ceased. The body function, that, they just attended church, maybe, if they were lucky, once every Sunday morning, or, or, you know, a week. <clears throat> Um, just so many of the realities that seem so alive and that they can even stand and uh, testify to. And my, my statement or comment on that is I am not here to just preach doctrine and have people go away thinking they know something. I am here that Christ may be formed in his body. That Christ may get the glory on a larger scale than just my life. That's important to me, and I believe we've got enough here that that's important to us. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trusting we have two or more that are gathered in the name of that. Mm -hmm. And if we do, then there is, there he is in the midst. And that's an interesting thing, too. Just how this searches the word. He sent them before his face and into every city and place where he himself would come. We're going in there preparing the way of the Lord. We're bringing the Lord in. We're going everywhere that Jesus would go. We're not going where we want to go. They're, we're going everywhere he would. He was going to come. Does that make sense to anybody? And so, I try not to make decisions that are just right or, or spiritual or even, even logically sound. I try to hear from the Lord and to see it in more than just hearing a voice from heaven and, and have that answer come as a fulfillment of all that we believe and all that is true on whatever level, the body, the cross. The, you see what I'm saying? I mean, it's a whole lot more than just being a Christian and walking around going, well, should I go that way or this way? Well, go that way. You're not more spiritual for that. There's no more Christ for that. And that, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, okay, you know. But when what you are doing is involved in the life and nature of Christ and you are, you are working toward that with others, Something's going on. One should put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand. That's, would you say that's worth something? You send them out by twos? I would say it's worth a huge amount. But, you know, much of Christianity is lived on an individual basis. I'm a Christian, that's all I know. Me and Jesus got a really thing You know? And it, it sounds really good, but it's not the fullness of the truth. And here's the deal. It is not the truth after the resurrection. That's the key. It may have been the truth before the resurrection. But after the resurrection, Jesus before the resurrection had disciples that were over there. After the resurrection, they were not just disciples. They were his body. They were his bride. They were bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Now, you call that a doctrine. He doesn't call that a doctrine. That's what he gave his self for and his body and his life for to create and nobody else does it I'm determined that he will in some manner receive what it is that he sought in the first place and that is a bride in the body after his kind in his image so in the process of that you have people that come and go amen but there must be a place. See, Jesus didn't just say, oh, I'll die for you. I mean, there was a physical cross, and he went and died on it. Amen? You know, oh, I'd die on that if you wanted me to. But, you know, 
Oh, he, he did. He went back. You know, he said, I've got to go to Jerusalem. Well, why don't you stay here? Well, Jerusalem's the place that God's appointed for me. Well, just down here, you know, save the wall. You know, and that's the way we think. Well, just be practical, Jesus. If you just died here, you say the walk is, you know, and it happens there. He's going, I'm living off a whole different basis than you are. You're living by common sense, and I'm living by the Spirit of God and the knowledge of the Lord. So, so anyway, he sent him by twos and uh, into every place that he would uh, himself go. And then verse 2, Therefore said unto him, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. And... He's not, you know, there is no lack of people willing to jump up and go do something for God. There's no lack for people willing to jump up and go do something for God. For God. Well, let's go do that. Okay, we'll do that. Well, let's go, you know, let's have a outreach to something. Okay, well, let's da 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 da. People do stuff all the time. He's not looking for that. He's looking for that which has embraced him, that has come into that that fellowship of, of the resurrected new man that has come into the body reality in such a manner that they are they are, have designated their lives to be a living expression of Christ in the earth. And they've done that jointly with whoever, whoever, whoever the Lord's called them to do that with. These laborers were not rogues. They were, they were out from him and therefore sent. And that's that's important. Yeah. And I believe all of that's important because this whole thing of, of training leaders and everything really gets down to practical stuff, folks. It's where the rubber meets the road. You ought to try to say that and have it translated in Spanish. <laughs> where the rubber meets the road. You know, it's right there in the practical things of life. And um, uh, as I said, Jesus used on-the-job training. I mean, he called disciples. He took them with him. They slept with him. They got up. Da, 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 da. There was there was not this thing of you know Peter was married. Kind of worked through that little job there for three and a half years of Jesus' ministry. Can anybody hear this? Oh God, Peter! Why can't you come home for dinner? <laughs> you can't live on loaves and fishes, you know. You need something healthy. I'm sure there was stuff. I'm sure there was stuff. But I'm also sure that, you know, something happened in him and he understood greater things than the earth at the moment. He realized that living for Christ was everything. One life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And not everybody has not everybody feels that way. I don't I don't expect everybody to feel that way in the sense of it's my responsibility to make you feel that way. I say those things for the ones that is in their heart. They already, I don't want to shove that down from somebody's throat and say, you ought to live for God and you ought to get up there. Oh, that is not in me even a little bit. That's, that's, that's more energy than I want to expend. <laughs> I don't want to, I have no desire to try to force people to do what they have no desire to do. That sounds like misery to me. Why? Well, then why do you say all this stuff? You make me feel uncomfortable when you do it. I have to fidget in my stinking chair. Everybody talk like this. I'm not talking to you. Quit fidgeting. Be free. I'm talking to those who go, yeah, 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 that's in my heart. That's what I want to hear. That's, that's what I'm doing, and it's good to hear it again. Or you know, Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not hunting the flesh down. I'm just speaking the word. Letting the seeds fall where they will. Amen. So, you know, he, like Jesus said, I, I like his spirit. He that hath an ear, let him hear it. <laughs> you know, if you can hear that and, and rejoice over it, then go for it. And if you can't, be free. You know? God knows that Kmart needs you at this time. <laughs> you know, they're going under. Oh. Uh, I actually do have notes that I have written, and I should read from some of these, and I haven't yet in this whole course, so I'm going to. Um, no classroom in the world can teach you what you can learn in practical, everyday situations. Jesus didn't do it all. 
he utilized the disciples. Jesus sent the twelve and later seventy to go out carrying no money or things except the bare necessities. Amen? I mean, we read that, but I mean, now come on. You be the one that you're sitting there with 70 people and he says, okay, I don't want you to carry no purse, no billfold, no money, no food, no this or that. I want you to go out for two weeks. Two weeks? I can't do that. Who's going to? How am I? What? <laughs> yeah. It was necessary. Thank you, George. You know, I get God backing me up and I got George back. Major confirmation. <laughs> it was necessary for them to come face to face with problems of life and the distresses of their fellow man. This contact would break down dependence on self and thrust into a reliance on the sufficiency of God. Do you believe that? Yeah. When you're out there and you're 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 going by twos anyway, you're going, oh man, where are we going to stay? And by the way, I have I have done this before. I've been put in this situation before. It's exciting. <laughs> You're taken in a car and you're driven somewhere and dropped off with another person. <laughs> you don't have a clue where you are or what's going on. And so you're uh, just out sharing about Jesus and da 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 you know. And, and uh, you know, by the last door you knocked on, it's one in the morning. <laughs> we crash in your place, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the idea isn't to coerce them and to let you stay there. But the truth is, you know what? God does provide. God takes care of our needs. And we need to be put in situations where it is beyond our ability. I got one. Woo! And an amen. It's not bad. It's good. You'll grow. And you'll be healthy, too. It's not bad. When you are in situations beyond your ability, beyond your strength, if you are a true son of God, you will turn to the living God. And you'll find sufficiency beyond anything you ever knew before. And you know what? You do it enough times, you just live that way. It's called living by faith. Most people don't live by faith. They experience circumstances in which at that moment they bring their faith to the forefront. But living by, the just shall live by faith. That's the word of God. Yeah. You know, it was never meant to be a, okay, live your life until you come to a situation you can't handle. And go, oh, you know, no, no, no. Live always in the resources and the abundance of his life. And once you live that way, then something happens. You go, you know, you, you, I mean, some of you have been around long enough. You've seen me and, you know. I remember one when we were on the Bolivar property. I mean, uh, the... Uh, uh, Maple Street property, and you know, people came and said, Oh my god, this is happening! You know, what are we going to do? It's totally beyond our means and everything, and there's no way we can handle it. And I remember just a big smile coming on my face and saying, Wow, I guess we're going to have to start believing in the God of miracles. I mean, I love that. God, you know, we're all, everybody, oh, I believe in the God of miracles until we need a miracle. Oh my God, it's impossible. I'm going to need a miracle. <laughs> yeah. What were you saying last week in church? <laughs> you're supposed to go, you know, yes, baby, thank God for this situation. Now we'll, we'll see the God of miracles. To Him be all the glory. Amen. You don't see that real often. But why not? If we live by faith, then many of the things that would throw us, we're already moving in faith. It's like the shield of faith. Amen? The shield of faith blocks all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. Doesn't it say that in Ephesians 6? Amen? If you regularly carry the shield of faith, then you're blocking stuff you're not even aware of. But that's not how most people live. Faith is a thing that you have to muster up at a certain time. So you walk along, the devil shoots a bunch of fiery darts. <laughs> oh, 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 faith come by hearing, hearing by the word. Oh, you know, pretty soon we get the shield of faith on. It's a little late, folks. We got darts on it up. Oh, oh, oh. Well, at least you got the shield of faith up for what's coming next. But I mean, you're sitting there with a flaming head. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, 
let's, you know, the time to have faith and the time to get faith is not after the enemy has shut the fire dark. The time to do it is to walk in faith long before you face anything because you will face stuff. So you just walk on this shield of faith. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. You know? God sent them out. God, Jesus called them unto himself and walked with them every day, day and night. With purpose. Because he was going to go away, can you imagine this, in three and a half years. These guys had to be ready because he was leaving town. <laughs> oh my, and we're going to put it all in the hands of Peter. <laughs> you know, a little John. And these guys. Bartholomew. <laughs> That is, you know. So he puts us in these situations. And in these situations, we find sufficiency beyond ourselves. And we get, we be, just in our being, apart from leadership, we become more peaceful. We become more content. We become more, we have a deeper joy than circumstances. I don't know, there's just a, there's a, just a, a, a general sense of well-being that most people don't have. Because you just, it's all right. You know that it's all right because you're with the Lord. It's all right. So like, Is it all right? It's all right. Well, what well, well, makes you think it's all right? Well, I just know that. You know, you can't, you, you know, you say, well, you can always say the old, well, God's in control, but you know he's in control. You're not trying to convince yourself in that. You know it's going to be okay. You know, well, it looks really bad. Yeah, but it's going to be okay. <coughs> okay. You see what I mean? You start bringing stability and peace to other people because you, you've walked with the Lord yourself in this stuff. You've had on-the-job training. You've been, and you know, people think I've had. I've had people say, "Well, why do you put people that don't know how to do anything in jobs?" Well, just so you know, they were talking about you. Would you like to know their name? <laughs> they left. Sucks. Jesus is good. 
Jesus is good. Man, there is, you know, there's, there's that thing of the, the tree with the roots in the ground and the wind is blowing and it's blowing and it's bending over and all the leaves of, not all of them, but a bunch of them blowing off and it's fighting to stay upright and all this kind of stuff. And, and in itself it's saying, you know, it just seems like I just face problems all the time and there's no break from the wind and the stress and the pressure that's pushing against me. And you have no clue that all during that time, with all that stress and pressure, it's the roots are just going down deeper and getting a stronger hold. Because the growth at that point is not up. It's inward. Well, at that moment, how do you explain that to the tree? Dad, as, it, as the sun begins to come out and everything, it begins to take on new burdens, new stresses, new things, and handles it a lot better. See, the deal is, when the early stages of any of this stuff, we can't handle. A little kid can't handle stuff a parent can handle, amen? Mm -hmm. How did, what, what made the difference? You know, body size? No, body size doesn't make the difference. Going through stuff, handling things, being with the Lord. In fact, I guess I'm probably written this all this down here somewhere. When faced with the problem of feeding 5,000, Jesus handed the problem over to Philip. You remember that? <laughs> Philip came to Jesus and said, Man, we've got all these people. It's, it's getting dark right now. If we send them away, man, they're not going to be able to get to a place to eat food before total darkness and everything. And, but we can't send them away. And Jesus said, Well, what do we have to feed them? And he said, well, Five loaves and two fishes. 5,000 men. Not counting women and children. Okay, let's see. Five loaves and two fishes. Okay, Philip, I tell you what, you give them to eat. That's what Jesus said to Philip. Can you imagine? Five thousand people to his back. <laughs> Jesus hands it to him. What? Are you out of your mind? We can't do this. This is impossible. It can't be done. You know, can you imagine, can you imagine Philip going off on Jesus? <laughs> can you imagine somebody around here going off on him? <laughs> see, I, but I mean, it's the truth, and we just need to see that, is that, and you know what it says in the Bible? It says, Jesus said to Philip, you give them to eat, and you know what the next thing says? This he said to test him. Oh. Oh. Well, something else is going on here than what we think. Jesus is in the testing business. Jesus is in the preparing business. Jesus is using all things, working it together for good for them who love God, who are called according to the purpose. And so, you know, this was not an out of order thing. In our mind, we say out of order. In his mind, perfect order. It's going to bring about. No, it's not bringing about at that moment everything that he wants. It will work together with all the other things to bring about what he wants. You can't live in the moment. And somewhere in you, there has to be a trust that God knows what he's doing. Uh, I think I mentioned this, but anybody remember reading The Hiding Place, the book The Hiding Place by uh, Corey Tinder? A couple of them. It's a great book. It's a great book. And I recently told the story of the fleas, but I don't know, it was just I read it all, about six months ago. But it's a great story. You know, they threw, threw them, Corey and them in this, you know, it's in a concentration camp in Germany. They're all in the bed uh, in this area with this huge bed with a million people on it. And there are fleas. There are fleas. And they get in the bed and they're being eaten up with fleas and everything. And Corey says to her sister, Betsy, this is horrible. Why would God put us here? Why? How could this be? And, and Betsy says, in everything give thanks. Let's thank the Lord for the fleas. And of course, Betsy's response is, she goes off. Yeah. Thank the Lord for the fleas. Are you crazy? I am not thanking God for these fleas. It ain't going to happen. This ain't right, man. This is bad. Oh, God, what are you doing? And what? And at the time, she goes off. So sometime later, they start a Bible thing in there. And they get, they're able to have these Bible sessions. And Betsy's in there sharing the word with everybody. And, you know, they don't, the only light in the whole darkness of that horrible place was Jesus. That, that, that Betsy and Corey were bringing. They 
you're sharing and everything. And then one of the top people in the thing told him, said, you know why you're able to have all these meetings and everything? He says, none of the Germans will come into this barracks because of all the fleas. <laughs> and when Corey heard it, she went, sorry, Lord. <laughs> I mean, God is good, but no, 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 it's not good to my flesh. I'm being dead. Oh my God, no, no, no. But look, I mean, light. They that sat in darkness saw a great light. Hallelujah. That's worth a bunch right there. You know? And, you know, we, we just have to get past our feelings and our bites and our things that trouble us. And and you know what the, the, uh, Bessie said, the hiding place was? Most people thought it was this little room that they had in the back of their house that they built where they could hide all the Jews. And in the book it says what the hiding place was. Do you remember what it was? The will of God. Betsy said, all things that come our way are the will of God. And we trust God for that. Please, whatever else. And, and this is our hiding place. We are safe here. Is that too tough for you? You've got to read the book. You haven't seen tough. Yeah, yeah. And it's a real book. I mean, it's a true story. So, the Lord uses all these circumstances. Uh, you'll never develop faith for big problems until you have faced, until you've been faced with big problems. If someone else handles all the challenges of life for you, then you will never be properly developed in the Lord. And I always use this example because it means something to me. I use examples that you've heard from me from over and over because they have affected my life. David came and saw Goliath and his brother said, you can't fight him. You're just a little kid and everything. And he said, no, no, I can defeat him. And he said, what makes you think you can defeat him? And he said, well, you know, Israel is the flock of God and my father put me over a flock of sheep and this bear came out against the sheep. And I took the sling and I defeated him. And he said, next came a lion, which is bigger than a bear, more fierce, king of the jungle. Next came a lion and I defeated him. So there's the bear and there's the lion and now there's the lion. And he said, and God will take care of the lion just like he did that bear and that lion. That didn't just happen overnight. He didn't say, well, you know, my last battle was with a man. And he bit me twice before I killed him. You know, you know so now you're going to fight Goliath. I don't think so. No, there's a progression where you begin to... And basically, all you're doing is building your confidence in the living God. That's all you're doing. You're building confidence in the living God. And so, bigger problems come, and they do come. They do come. Big problems. And all... In the heart of God, all of that is meant for. We think it's about this, and that person did that, and the devil did this. And in the heart of God, all of this junk, all of, is nothing more to, than to ground us and establish us more, not in the visible, but in the invisible. Not in the, in the circumstances, but in the living reality of Christ. And to dwell there in Him. And from that place, reign and rule with Him. That's all. He, he allows all this stuff. It's, and we get all caught up in it. You know, and I know what I'm talking about. I get all caught up in it. And it's ridiculous because it's only meant to establish you more in him. All right, so as, as with Peter walking on the water, or Philip with the 5,000, Jesus is there to catch us if we fall. But how will we know that unless we put, we're put in a position to find it out? Remember, Peter says, I, I want to come to you. On the water. Jesus says, Come. Come. Peter starts walking on the water. Come to Jesus. He didn't say, I'm walking on the water. He said, I'm coming to Jesus. I'm coming to Jesus. But what happened? Got his eyes off Jesus, looked around, looked at the storm, looked at the waves, began to sink. What happened? Jesus said, Idiot, you're on your own. And he went boom, straight to the bottom of the sea and drowned. And we never saw Peter again, right? No. No. He began to sing. Jesus reached down and caught him. And brought him up. 
you have to even know that if you attempt something, you are prob there's a there is a chance that you're going to fail. Okay? And you need to know, like Peter found out that day, that even if you fail, even if you mess up, even if you get your eyes off Jesus, even if you're looking in places you shouldn't be looking and stuff's going on, that Jesus is there to catch you. You need to learn that lesson. You know what? You don't learn that lesson in the classroom. <laughs> you learn that lesson in life. And you learn that lesson by risking stepping out. Somebody said, well, I don't want to risk. I don't want to go out on the limb. That's where all the fruit is. You know? Man, I want to go where the fruit is. I want to go where the biggest and the best for the glory of God can be. So it means go out on the limb. And I guarantee you go out on the limb, people are going to... Hey, look, we got it out in the open now. <laughs> Man, it's party time for you. But hey, I mean, you got a choice. You can crawl back in there, hide, from, hide around the trunk on the opposite side, and hide from everything, and never do anything from God. You know what I mean? You can do that, and 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 you know what? Millions do. But Jesus is worth it. He's worth it. So you go, you know, I mean, with me, I have a little hesitancy, and you know, reach up there, feel the rope burns. And go, man, that's tough. Ah, let's go back in. You know, let's go for the Lord. Let's go again. The devil goes, I thought I'd kick you and beat you, and you're out of there. Well, you kicked me and beat me, and I was down, but I wasn't out. Persecuted, but not destroyed. Cast down, but not forsaken. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's Paul's words, and he wasn't joking. <laughs> He'd been through all this junk, and he wasn't joking, man. He'd been beaten and, and, and thrown into prison, and, you know, thrown into the deep, and all sorts of stuff. But it, it didn't stop him. And yes, sometimes things slow you down a little bit. But this, or, and you at that moment, or for a period of time, it may stop you. But the key is, you begin to lift your eyes back up, and you begin to see Jesus, you begin to feed on the bread from heaven, you begin to feed on the bread of life, you begin to, to partake of, of Christ. And as you do, as you look into His face, you are changed from glory to glory into that same image, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And as you are changed, all of a sudden, new strength comes in you, not your strength. New courage comes in you, not your courage. New um, um, willingness comes in you, not your willingness. <laughs> And all this stuff begins to fit you, and you're up and you're going again. And, and in one sense, you're kind of going, what, what, what am I doing? I'm moving in that direction. Stop. <laughs> but, it, but you don't because you go, this is not me. This is Jesus. He's back. Amen. <laughs> you know, you can kill him and he, God raises him from the dead. You know? And so you, your goal then is, man, you know, I'm going to go on, and sure enough, you'll get beat, you'll risk, you'll fail, you'll do something. Something's going to happen. Something bad's going to happen, okay? But there's this thing called resurrection. There's this thing called Jesus. There's this thing called greater is he that is in me than me. How are you going to know that? You'll never know. You, let me tell you. You can sit here and listen to this stuff and you go, wow, that's pretty cool. Or, oh, yeah, why? And whatever, whatever response you might say, it, it means nothing to you here, really. I mean, it can't. It can't mean to, maybe it can be a seed, and then when you get in that situation, God brings it to your memory, and you go, this is what Randy was talking about. And yeah, but now it means nothing. It only means something when you fail and you start sinking, you feel that hand of Jesus start pulling you up, and you're like, oh, God, thank God, thank God for Jesus. Drinking of the wells of salvation. Yeah. I'm saved, I'm saved, hallelujah, I'm saved. You know. You know, drink. <laughs> you know. Whoa, and it's just flooding over. And you're just going, man, I deserve to go to the bottom. I deserve to sink and be down. But my Jesus is there, and I wouldn't have known him unless I had Fail. We don't like to hear that. I got a good one for you. What, maybe I can find it real quick. 
we're running out of time. And here I'm talking about Jesus and all that stuff. Most people talking about leadership. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I don't remember, but I think I know the location in my Bible. <laughs> yes. I got it, just like y'all said. I have no clue where it was at. I just remember the basic location in my Bible. Um, get ready. Here we go. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Okay, if your steps are ordered to the Lord, glory to God, there's not going to be any problems because every step I have is ordered to the Lord. My steps are ordered to the Lord, and God delights in my way, so I am assured of never messing up or never failing because my steps are ordered to the Lord, right? Let's read the next verse. Let's read that first. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, well, hold it, Lord. You said my steps are ordered to you. What's this fall stuff? Is that right? Steps are ordered of the Lord. Though he fall? No, my steps are ordered of the Lord. I never fall. That, isn't that the way we think? This says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Now, when you have experienced some junk and you've been pulled out, you're just, you, you, you're more than happy you got pulled out. You have learned a valuable lesson. You have learned, you have learned to put your trust in the Lord in a whole new way, and you may take a few more of those to really establish you, but I mean, and then you go, my steps are ordered to the Lord, and then you find yourself falling, and then you may think, instead of automatically going, this ain't nothing but the devil, you might think, you know, my steps were ordered to the Lord, and this happened. God is working all things, not just good things, all things. Bad things, good things, all things are working together for good to those who are called according to His purpose. He's conforming you into the image of His Son, and that may take failure so that you can learn to trust in His sufficiency. That may take all sorts of things, but it doesn't matter. After a while, you're, you're so connected with Him that you're not so aware of all of the... You're not aware of the good things that happen, and you're like, oh, man, man, you know, oh, and you're kind of, you're kind of even not there. You're just kind of, oh. <laughs> you know, you're with the Lord. You know what I mean? You're in another place. You're dwelling in another place. You, you have another reality, and, you know, you're not all caught up in that. And then if you fail, oh, yeah, you idiot, you know, you're not all caught up in that. You're just going, well, my steps are ordered to the Lord, and he delights in my way, and the I fall. I will not be utterly cast down. For, let us say, the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Man, that's good stuff. Maybe I can actually finish that. There is no substitute for experience. A leader will learn more by working in a position of responsibility and by failure than in a classroom. Leadership is developed in handling real responsibility and not just having a title of authority. You know, a lot of people want titles. And, and I want Jesus. And I know you do. A title will not accomplish what God wants. There is nothing so valuable, so relevant to training and growth as day-to-day -day experience. Truth experienced is truth learned. In other words, you can sit in class and hear and hear and hear and hear, and it makes no difference. Truth experienced is truth learned. Amen? Man, that's why we have outreaches. That's why we have a total environment. That's why we do this stuff. It's not some sort of foolish plan or some random thing. There, it is designed of the Lord to accomplish certain things. If we don't understand those purposes and we're not in tune with that plan, man, we're just bouncing around like a ball in a pinball machine. We don't know what's going on. But it was, it was meant for true growth for you and, and the Lord. It is experience, responsibilities, and problems which enable a leader to grow. And through these things, he acquires the qualifications of leadership on a higher level. It is only in the face of problems that are beyond us that we cry for the wisdom that is from above. One, one risk we take in learning through experience is the making of mistakes. That's one risk that we take. 
we risk making mistakes and I make them, you're going to make them, people are going to see you make mistakes. We got grace around here. Jesus has got grace. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <clears throat> what is important is not that we never make mistakes, rather that we learn from those mistakes, that we might become better leaders, and in truth, that we might become more conformed to His image. Problems, mistakes, and difficulties should be looked upon as the raw material of spiritual growth and victory. Failure is not the thing, but how you handle it. And, you know, that really is the bottom line, is that you're going to experience some devastating failures at times. You will. It's not the failure. It is how you handle it. Do you let that, and see, you're training yourself right now. When, when failures come and the devil comes and says, you're an idiot, what are you doing here? You shouldn't even be in this place. These people are all spiritual. Isn't that a hilarious lie? <laughs> That's what he tells people. I mean, look around you, come on. You don't take a very deep look. These people ain't all spiritual. These people need Jesus. But that's what he says. And if we are if we're just, you know, easily pushed over, easily run over by the devil, then how can God give us great tasks that relate to many lives and stuff? We must work with the Spirit of God now and overcome those lives and push back the darkness with the light of the truth that is in Jesus. We must do that. I, I mean, forget me, forget this place. You must do that. If you weren't here, I wish you weren't here so I could meet you out on the street. I'm telling you this very true. It has nothing to do with me or this place. You must do that. You must fight the good fight of faith. Stand up for Jesus. And if you can do it inside of here, when your emotions are rampant, when, you, yes. when you, your mind is just going crazy, and you can go, shut up, everybody. I'm not talking about out here. I'm talking about here. <laughs> Shut up, everybody. All this noise. And ch Just be quiet. Hold it. I want to say something. Everybody else is talking. I want to say something. I believe in Jesus. I believe he is my life. I believe that he is overcoming you as darkness right now. I, you know what I mean? I mean, there has to be a faith stand. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must rise up in faith. You must stand. Having done all, stand. Have your gird, your, your loins girded about with truth. The helmet of salvation. All of the armor of God. And that's not some fakey spiritual thing that you do. That is living reality of truth girding you when the enemy should knock you down. That is faith absorbing the darts when they should be hitting you and rolling you. That is, that is the living reality. That's peace on your feet as you walk instead of in turmoil all the time. This is when the truth has got us instead of us getting hold of the truth. That's, right. and that's why we're here. That's what this place is about. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for hungry people that love you. Thank you for those that their lives are being formed right now. They're their ways and means are being settled within them. And Lord, some are not satisfied with that and they want to they break with some things, Father. Grant them the freedom that only comes through Christ your Son to be able to break with those things. Others, Lord, are making steady progress. Oh, not, not valiantly glorious progress, but steady and Lord, they will look up one day like the children of Israel and look back and say, Egypt is a long way away. We have come far. Lord, thank you for steady, solid, faithful growth. And Lord, I just ask you to move by your spirit. Answer the, the cry for more of Jesus to every heart that is crying out for him. Lord, let us not be complacent. Teach us to arouse our own selves. Lord, like David encouraged himself in the Lord, when everybody turned against him, he encouraged himself in you. Lord, give us more like the heart of David, but Lord, not emulating David, but emulating Christ.
Christ, knowing Him, being one with Him. Father, fill us with all the fullness that is Christ. Bless the Word. Bless this time in Jesus.